Good morning. Good morning. It's been a while. Uh, it seems as though that it's been about a year or so. I'm, I'm out speaking with Beth this morning. She said, George, it seems like you've been gone a year. Uh, but I'm so happy to be back. Uh, look at my family. We are just so I'm overjoyed about the uh, love that you've shown us. And we are just so happy to be back with you this morning. Um, those who are visiting with us, we want you to know that you are our honored guest. We also want you to know that you're not a stranger here, but you are a guest of God. If you have any questions about uh, what we teach here, what we believe in, uh, we would invite you to ask those questions at the conclusion of our services this morning. Uh, we will, uh, if you give us a Bible question, we will give you a Bible answer for your question. Uh, again, it's just so good to be back with each and every one of you this morning. We've been gone for the uh, past three Sundays. Uh, the first Sunday, Roger was here. Uh, he actually spoke on June the 28th. Uh, the next week was Carol Lee on July the 5th. And last week was Brother Milton Wilson. Uh, Brother Milton uh, was a dear friend of mine. Uh, we go uh, way back and we've spent a lot of time together. Uh, like a lot of time in prayer together. And um, I understood he did a fabulous job. So it's Really good again to be back. Now we're going to be gone again next week. We're going to be, uh, I can't, uh, Brother Will Ed is going to be bringing the lesson next week. Um, we're going to be in Memphis, Tennessee on my side of the family reunion. Uh, we're going to be there for about uh, four days or so. But we were at my wife's side in uh, Galena and Joplin about three weeks ago. And then we were over in Maui. We celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. And uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, prior to us leaving, um, our boys, uh, Brock and Caleb, took us to Starbucks. And they treated us to a Starbucks. I mean, that was really nice. And uh, they sat us down and they talked to us and they said, Mom and Dad, we're proud of you. Uh, and time flies by uh, 25 years later. And they set us down, and they actually uh, gave us these watches, these his and her watches, fossil watches, which were pretty cool. And what was really cool about it is that I'm on the back of them, they actually had engraved 25 to life. <laughs> I mean, isn't that cool? 25 to life. Um, I don't know what they're trying to say, but uh, I mean, that was pretty cool. 25 to life. Um, I think that that was a genius. And uh, so Tanya and I and the boys, we had a great time. I'm over in Maui. Um, I've been there several times before. Uh, and this right here was a great trip with our boys. We actually took the trek up. We woke up at 2 o'clock one morning and went up to a Haleakala, a Mount the Volcano, um, Mount Summit. And it was a 37-mile trek up there. And we went up there to see the sunrise. And we were on top of this mountain. It hits the, it hits the, uh, the uh, shortest distance going up, 37 mile distance to one of the highest um, elevation gains, the quickest um, elevation gain. And we were up there and saw the sunrise at 5.51 AM. It was about 40 degrees difference. But it was a great place to be. And just to see God at work it is an amazing thing. Let me tell you. Look at that. I mean, isn't that beautiful? But uh, God is good, and he saw us back here safely. And here we are with you this morning. So if you would, uh, open your Bibles to Hosea. Hosea chapter 1. We're going to be looking at our uh, study is going to be from there, Hosea chapter 1. The Old Testament of Hosea. And we are in our 15th week, so we're halfway through our study of the story, Hosea chapter 1, and we're going to be looking at verses 1, 2, and 3. If you have it, say amen. amen. The word. 
word of the Lord that came to Hosea, son of Beri, during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and during the reign of Jeroboam, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. For like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. So he married Gomer, daughter of Dibbalina, and she conceived and bore him a son. Um, I know that you have your Bible, so hold them up and repeat after me that this is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. The book of all ages. I will know it. I will believe it. I will live it. Amen. I might have heard somebody say that when God saved us, while we were yet sinners, He took His greatest risk. Because the truth is, the investment that came along with God bringing us into a relationship with Him is something that cannot be fully comprehended. It cannot be uh, fully understood, and sometimes, oftentimes, it's devalued, and it's unappreciated. We've been uh, looking at this story over the past 14 weeks, and what we know is that God is a God of relationships. And his desire has always been and will always be to bring you and me back into a covenant relationship with him. Into a communion with him. God used Hosea and Gomer's relationship as an object lesson to show how Judah sinned against him by following other gods and how God remains faithful even when his people are unfaithful. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, again we approach your throne of grace, Father, and uh, we thank you for your patience, your faithfulness, and your never-ending love for your children. Father, we pray that we can come closer and closer to you, come into a better relationship with you, because that's what you desire. Father, we pray that as we go into this study, that you would open our hearts, that you would open our minds, and be receptive to your word. Father, we love you. And the truth is, we couldn't do it without you. In Christ's name we pray this prayer. Amen. God gave uh, Hosea two commands. The first command we see here in Hosea chapter 1 in verse number 2. This is what he said. He said, go marry a promiscuous woman. And don't only marry her, but have children with her. For like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. In order for Hosea to obey God's command, it had to take faith. Some quick principles and guiding facts on what faith is and what faith is not. The word faith is a word that is often used, but often misunderstood. Faith is not swallowing hook, line, and sinker. Everything that your minister tells you, everything that your elder tells you. Faith is not holy. a hysteria. Faith does not take foolish chances. Faith is not believing only what we can explain or see. Faith is not putting one's trust in anything or anybody other than God himself. Faith is not faith without action. Rather, faith is believing that God spoke the world into existence. Faith is worship offered to God exactly as he directed. Faith is living a life well-pleasing to God. Faith is action motivated by God's warning. Faith is trusting the promises of God. Faith is believing that God can do the impossible.
Faith is surrender, total surrender to God's will. Faith is choosing the spiritual instead of the material. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6 that without faith it is impossible to please God. The second command we can find here in Hosea chapter 3 in verse number 1. Go show your love to your wife again. First he said go marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. But now he says go show your love to your wife again. Though she is loved by another man and is an adulteress, love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. This is one of the most profound ways God demonstrates and exemplifies his love in Scripture. The book of Hosea is an autobiographical sketch that is written by Hosea about Hosea. Here we have a very interesting story that gives us a very vivid and clear-cut picture about the love of God for the people of God throughout eternity and time. Here we uh, see that God tells Hosea the prophet to go marry a woman named Gomer. And as we read, we discover that Gomer is a woman of whoredom. When I researched this, I found out that Gomer was first innocent. She represented Israel who fell away from God and became promiscuous. Hosea cited in Hosea chapter 9, in verse number 10, when I found Israel, it was like finding grapes in the desert. When I saw your ancestors, it was like seeing the early fruit on the fig tree. But when they came to Baal Peor, they consecrated themselves to that shameful wife and became as vile as the thing they loved. Hosea portrayed two contrasting images. One was an image of God, and the other image was of Israel. And then God as a loving father, and Israel as a stubborn and unrepentant son. We see here in Hosea chapter 11, Verse number one, when Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. But the more they were called, the more they went away from me. They sacrificed to Baal, and they burned incense to images. So from all indication, at the time of the wedding, between Gomer and Hosea, Gomer was a virgin, but later proved to be unfaithful. Hosea is the man of God called and equipped to carry the good news of the coming Messiah to throughout Judea. And then upon further study, what I found out is that Hosea represents God and Gomer represents and depicts the people of God who have a wicked tendency to stray and were unfaithful to him and rejected his love. Here we have a pattern of a woman of loose living, a shallow understanding of the value and virtue of what it, love really is all about. But the prophet marries this woman of loose living because God told him to. This prostitute in hopes of loving her out of her old ways. But much to his dismay and despair and to add insult and injury to his already miserable situation, he soon discovers how entrenched and immersed she is with her lifestyle. Do you know what that means? I mean, in other words, she comes home late at night. She wakes up in strange and unfamiliar places. She favors other lovers and runs after other men. She sells her body and gives herself for money. She performs cheap, cheap favors on men and makes a living on her back rather than cultivating her relationship with her husband. 
Can you imagine her standing downtown at the corner of 6th and Guadalupe, the historic of entertainment district of Austin, even though she is married to the minister of the local church? Gomer was an unfaithful wife. She was, she was a, an adulterous wife, prostituting wife. And God compares how Israel was unfaithful and prostituted themselves and gave themselves to other gods. In Hosea chapter 4, verse number 12, my people consult a wood knife and divine with rods. Rod speaks to them. A spirit of prostitution leads them astray. They are unfaithful to their God. The relationship between Hosea and Gomer, what it does is that it provides us an object lesson. It provides us a symbol of Israel and their sexual nature of idolatry that the people were practicing consistently. They were worshiping male, form a ritual of prostitution. And Gomer, Gomer's of infidelity was a symbol of Israel's unfaithfulness. But Hosea's marriage and unconditional love of Gomer was a symbol of God's faithfulness and redemption to his unfaithful people. Church, relationships themselves require work, don't they? They take time and they require work. Relationships require reciprocity. Relationships require sacrifice. I'm, I'm like an expression of concern and care for one another. God has been faithful at keeping his end of the relationship, but the problem is not with God. The problem has been with us because we are some wishy-washy people. We have our own agendas. Is that right about it? Some want to have one foot in the church and one foot in the world. We are prone to unfaithfulness, but the truth is, is that God, the creator of the universe, our Savior and Redeemer, looked beyond our faults and he supplied our needs because he loved us in spite of us. So, what does Hosea do? What is his response? If he doesn't have his uh, attorney uh, give her a divorce decree, he doesn't send someone to the door and say, here are your papers. He doesn't put a hit out on his wife. He doesn't run her over with an SUV. He doesn't beat her into submission. He doesn't ridicule her. But the prophet Hosea goes after her and nurses her back to hell. Why? Because he loves her. Over and over again, she's unfaithful. She's a, a prostituting wife, an adulterous wife. But the prophet is faithful to the commitment of the marriage. Now, before you... Uh, point your religious scalpels. Before you point your pious finger and become too hard on going. I know what you're thinking. How can a woman who has a husband to love her like, like he loved Gomer be so unfaithful? Before you beat down Gomer Church, the woman who prostituted herself, who was unfaithful, who was unfaithful to her husband time and time again. Let me ask you this question. Is there a Gomer in you? Is there a Gomer in you? Do you prostitute your principles? Do you misplace your priorities? Have you compromised your convictions? Have you settled for something you should not have settled for? Have you contradicted your calling? You may, you may not be a lady of the night or a street walker or a hustler or a lady of pleasure, but do you lie on your income taxes? 
Do you throw rocks and hide your head? Do you disrespect your elders and slander and ridicule your family members and your parents? Do you lie, cheat, and steal? If you steal from God, his word says you are cursed with a curse because you have robbed me. If you misuse me, I mean you abuse your body. Your body doesn't belong to you. I'm here to tell you that this morning. Your body does not belong to you. His word says your body is the temple of God to be used as a vessel of honor. You run after the world and the things that are in the world, and you think the world can give you the lasting things that you need. But I'm here to tell you this morning that the Bible says that these things are only temporary. His word said, what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Amen? Before you look down on going the prostitute, I want you to ask yourself the question, is there a Gomer in me? Is there a Gomer in me? Paul said that we all are prisoners of sin. John said that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Solomon said, there is not a just man in the earth that does good and does not sin. There's sin in me. I mean, there's sin in you. There's a gomer in me. And there's a gomer in you. When was the last time you found yourself in a rendezvous with the world and the things of the world, performing worldly acts with Satan? When was the last time you sold yourself in your abilities and you compromised your name to satisfy and to gratify your fleshly desires? When was the last time that you did that? So, I think the question is, is there a Gomer in you? Is there a Gomer in you? Think about that for a moment. Pause for a second. Ask yourself. Don't look at your name. Is there a Gomer in me? I don't care how long you've been attending church. We all have a tendency to disappoint God. To break our commitment with God. Thus breaking God's heart. That's why every time you come to church, you are unqualified to judge and prejudge other people. If the truth be told, if it were not for the faithfulness and favor of God, you would not have your job this morning. If it were not for the faithfulness and favor of God, you would not have the car that brought you here this morning. If it were not for the faithfulness and favor of God, you would not have the house that you live in. You would not have the health that you have. You would not have the godly wife that you have. You would not have the godly husband that you have. If it were not for the faithfulness and favor of Almighty God. You don't have to say amen. I brought my own amen this morning. If it were not for the faithfulness, favor, and tireless work of Almighty God, with you day in and day out, when you keep messing up over and over again, you'll be in the same position as the person that you're trying to judge. Hello? But we serve I mean, an amazing God, an awesome God, don't we? And because he's so awesome, you ought to be thankful. You ought to be thankful to God for using you despite you. You ought to be thankful for him blessing you despite the donor in you. You ought to be thankful to God for working on you despite all the messed up issues in your life. 
Amen? God's brought you here this morning. He's brought you here this morning to say when things go wrong, when you mess up, when people talk about you, when you're, when you're down, when you stray away, I'm going to keep on loving you until you learn to love me back. And then guess what? He's going to love you again. That's what God does. He's going to love you again. Just like Hosea went back, I mean, loved his wife, Gomer. It's because God is in the people loving business. That's what he does. God specializes in qualifying the unqualified. God specializes in calling the outcast, using the unusable, wanting the unwanted, recycling the messed up. That's what God does. It is unthinkable that God would look at somebody as dirty as gone and say that I want you. I want you. The you that nobody else wants, that you think nobody else wants. The you that is still looking for something that cannot that man cannot give you. If there's a Gomer in the room this morning, don't leave here without saying, I'm going to get it right. Don't leave here this morning like you do week in and week out. Say that I'm going to give God the glory. Even though I keep messing up over and over again, God is good to me. Even though that I strap, I'm going to get it right this round, this week. If there's something we can do for you, if we can pray with you, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have the opportunity to do that this morning as we together stand and sing. Shabbat